Sam Smyers here. Today I'll talk about the FabFilter Pro C2 compressor plugin. This is a great compressor plugin that you can use for individual tracks, for bus processing, and for mastering. So if you enjoy this video, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that I put out to help you with your music production. So let's go ahead and dive into all the great features of this plugin. The song that we are going to be using as we test out the plugin is my song Focus that is out now and you can check it out on Spotify. When you first open up the plugin, this is what it looks like. You have this great display here and when you play some instruments, you can see the gain reduction being applied. You have the meters on the right hand side here and you have this knee display. So you can also change the range of the display. Currently, I have it set at 72 dB. I could go to 9 dB, which zooms in the display. To see more detail, or I can zoom all the way out to 90 dB. I'll leave it at 72 dB. The Pro C2 has eight different compressor styles. The clean is going to be your all around low distortion style, which is good for just about everything. We have the classic style, which is good for a more vintage feel. You have the opto, which has a relatively slow attack and a soft knee. You have the vocal style, which will bypass your ratio and your knee because it will set those automatically. And that helps put your vocal in front of the mix. You have your mastering, which is going to give you a more transparent style. So it's going to introduce as little harmonic distortion as possible while still being able to catch transients. Then we have the bus, which is going to be good for bus processing. You have the punch, which is going to be a analog style compressor. And then we have the pumping, which is going to be over the top pumping, which is great for drum processing or EDM. I'm gonna just leave it at clean for now. So we of course have the knobs threshold ratio attack and release, which are the knobs that you will find on just about every compressor. Above the threshold knob, there is this headphone button. And this is the audition button, which is going to allow you to hear the parts of the audio that the Pro C2 is compressing. So I'm gonna activate this and solo the drums. Then I'm going to lower the threshold. As I lower the threshold, more signal is being pushed above the threshold, so we are hearing more of that signal being processed. So that is what this audition button does. Under the threshold knob, there is the knee, so I can make the knee soft or I can make the knee hard. So I could adjust the knee all the way to be soft, and we can see on the display that the knee is becoming softer, and then I could adjust the knee to be all the way hard. And then we have this really hard knee. Under the ratio knob is the range slider, so I can actually choose the amount of gain reduction that can be applied, so I can limit the range if I don't want to apply too much gain reduction with my compression. So let's say the maximum amount of gain reduction that I want to apply is 5 dB, so I can just insert 5 dB as my range, and then as I lower this threshold, notice that the gain reduction on the meter will not go anywhere below or past 5 dB. So that is useful if you want to control the amount of gain reduction that is being applied. If you don't want to have the gain reduction being too much, you can limit the amount with this range slider. Under the attack knob is going to be your look ahead slider. You can activate the look ahead by going down here and turning it on. When you turn on the look ahead, that is going to activate the compressor before the signal actually comes into the compressor. So it is going to activate that attack even before the signal is coming in. So this is going to produce a softer attack. So I can raise the milliseconds of that look ahead time and what that is gonna do is it's going to soften up this attack if I have a really fast attack. Mm -hmm. 
So the look ahead is useful if you want to soften up that attack to reduce any kind of clicky sound that you might have if you have a fast attack. Next, we have the hold slider. So if I raise up the hold, the hold is actually going to hold that release longer. So let me go ahead and raise up this hold while playing the drums. So as you can see from this display, whenever I have this hold all the way up, it's basically holding the signal the entire time. So it's not actually ever being released. There is also the auto release option. So you could set this if you have a more variable signal and you want to change up that release if you don't want the release to be the same for every transient. Next is the wet and dry signal. So you have the auto gain option. If you have the auto gain option enabled, then the makeup gain will be applied automatically. If you need to add your own makeup gain or manually add your makeup gain, then you can turn off the auto gain and then adjust your makeup gain by turning this knob all the way up or down if you want to adjust the makeup gain down. Then you have the dry knob and the dry knob is useful if you want to use the compressor for parallel compression. So I can turn up the dry knob all the way to zero dB and then I can mix in the wet gain to create a parallel compression effect. On the bottom is oversampling. Oversampling is useful if you are using aggressive settings for your compressor. So if you are using a lot of processing with the Pro C2, then you might introduce aliasing or some kind of distortion. So basically what oversampling does is it helps reduce any kind of distortion that might be introduced from heavily using this compressor. The Pro C2 has some great sidechain options. To activate the sidechain, you click on this sidechain button and that will activate your sidechain. So you can have a internal sidechain or an external sidechain. If you have the internal sidechain turned on, then the internal sidechain is going to run through this EQ here and then that is going to trigger the compressor. So I could choose to only have the highs of my incoming signal trigger the compressor, or I could choose to only have the low end trigger the compressor. If you hit this audition button, this allows you to hear what is incoming into your compressor sidechain. So what you have to do is turn on these EQ filters by turning this button on, and you can also adjust the slope of these filters, and you can drag these back and forth. So I can drag that low one back and forth, and I can drag this high one back and forth. The center filter is going to be a bell filter automatically, and it's automatic, so if I bring this closer together, then it will raise up like that. So I could turn this auto off, and I can also change this middle filter to be something like a low shelf, and then I could create other filters by selecting these options. I can then choose the level of my sidechain, and then also there's this cool option called the Stereo Link. So basically Stereo Link is set at 100, so that means that both the left and the right channel are being compressed the same. If I turn this Stereo Link to below 100, then that means that the left and right channel are being compressed independently of each other. So with the stereo link set at 0%, let's go ahead and check out the gain reduction meter and see how the gain reduction is being applied independently to the left channel and independently to the right channel. So now let's watch when I put this stereo link to 100%. So as you can see with the stereo link to 0%, the left and right channel were pumping independently, being compressed independently of each other. And then when I put the stereo link at 100%,
they are both being compressed the same amount. If I raise this stereo link to anything above 100% and have this turned on mid, then only the mid channel is going to be compressed. I can go ahead and put this on side, and that means that only the side channel is going to be compressed if I have this slider raised all the way up past 100%. There's also an option to have the mid trigger the compressor, but have the sides be compressed or have the sides trigger the compressor, but only compress the mids. So there's some cool options using this stereo link slider. Let me show you how we can use the external sidechain. So I have the Pro C2 loaded up on the bass and I'm going to sidechain the drums to this compressor that's on the bass. I'm going to set the sidechain to external and I'm going to isolate the kick from that drums group and use the kick to trigger the compressor that is on the bass. So now with the addition button activated, I'll play the track and listen to that drum sidechain. It sounds like I have the kick isolated and that will serve as the sidechain to my bass. So now I can adjust the threshold to determine the amount of sidechain compression that I want to apply. If I want to turn off the sidechain, all I have to do is close the sidechain menu. Just note that whenever you close this menu, the sidechain is turned off. So if you want to use a sidechain, whether it be the internal sidechain or the external sidechain, you have to keep this menu open. So at the bottom right of the plugin, there is a bypass option so I can bypass the plugin by turning this on. There's also a mix slider so I can raise up the mix, which will increase the volume of the plugin, or I can decrease the mix to zero, and then that is essentially the plugin being bypassed. Next, you have the input level, so you can adjust the input level going into the plugin, and then you have the output level. There's also an option to resize the plugin. You can do custom size, small, medium, large, or you could even go full screen. Up here are a lot of really great presets, so if you want to dial in some settings really quickly, you can run through some of these presets. So currently we are on the bass. Let me use a bass preset and check out how this sounds. So those were some bass presets. Let's check out some of the presets on the drums. So that is how you use the FabFilter Pro C2 plugin. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos I do and also help other music producers and artists find videos like this to help them with music production. Thank you very much guys for watching. I'll see you next time.